Sorry. Hi, my name is Iman Ferry. I'm MicroTik certified trainer. Uh, at first, it is my honor to be here with you, and I have to say thank to MicroTik Group to address me here. Today, we are uh, going to talk about how to secure MicroTik wireless link using using uh, MicroTik uh, a specific uh, protocol, NV2, and using EAP. Imagine when you want to talk about wireless platform. Always you use it in many different ways, and you always use it to uh, connect your network in other infrastructure. But the most important thing that when you use a wireless protocol, that uh, you can use some protocol to gain more bandwidth, uh, more stable link, and the other thing. But the most important thing is that you use a shared medium shared media and uh, there is uh, too many vulnerability to attack to your network. So you always want to increase your security and uh, today we are going to talk about how to secure your network. Okay, uh, here is my experience. I have uh, 17 years in uh, IT field experience. I'm a consultant of Microtech, and I'm a Microtech certified trainer and Microsoft certified trainer. And I also I do penetration test. Okay, our outline. At first, we are going to talk about uh, WPA and WPA2, and then we talk about NS3 and NV2, Microtech proper uh, property, and also talk about public key and private key. And then we compare uh, PSK and EAP algorithm and then create a certificate and do the scenario. Okay. Uh, at first, when you uh, run a wireless link, all the protocol comes with a uh, web algorithm, as you remember. Uh, they are a static algorithm that you, there is only a static key shared between access point and a station. And there is no any hashing algorithm, so the hacker easily can access your data and can decrypt your data and access your network. So in 2003, uh, WPA came to uh, be as a successor to web algorithm. And WPA uh, used the same scenario uh, as a web algorithm and used TKIP. But uh, still, uh, there is vulnerability. And in 2004, WPA2 changed everything basically and uh, used a new en encryption algorithm named AES or Advanced Encryption Standard. But uh, when you use this dynamic keys algorithm, uh, you have two choices, PSK algorithm or EAP algorithm. When you use PSK algorithm, there is a pre-shared key between access point and station, as you uh, used before, for example, in your office, in your home. The other way you go, you ask your friend, give me your pass key. There is a pre-shared key with minimum of eight character and maximum of 64 character. And you encrypt your data using WPA or WPA2. Uh, but uh, what happens if the hacker access your pre-shared key just see your uh, pre-shared key and he or she can access your network, can gain your network, can uh, sniff all of your data, can decrypt all of your data and access to all of the things that you have. But the second algorithm, is, uh, you can use EAP algorithm or extensible authentication protocol. In extensible authentication protocol, you use certificate uh, or SSL as you use in, for example, HTTPS algorithm. And all of the, your data will be encrypted using a SSL or certificate. And uh, for example, with a minimum of 1,024 bits and maximum of 8,192 bits. So there is a file that is shared between access point and a station. So if you keep it safe, hacker can't access your data and your network will be safe. And uh, the most important thing that even you make uh, think that if you use this algorithm, your network will be um, uh, lose its performance and uh, more latency. But no, uh, because uh, when you want to uh, implement this algorithm, 
you have to use NSTream and NV2, a MicroTik property, MicroTik invent NV2 uh, to gain more bandwidth, less latency, and also solve the hidden node problem. So, as always, I said, big like for MicroTik. Okay. But what is the CA? Uh, wait. Okay, what is the CA? When you want to use this algorithm, you have to use a CA, a certificate authority, a server that make the certificate for you and generate the certificate for you that you want to use in your network. For example, certificate is designated and responsible to manage the security of your network, so uh, all of the clients are managed by this CA or certificate authority are under the domain uh, that manage CA and CA generate two keys for all of the nodes a private key and a public key for example uh, imagine you have a safe that is uh, can be open and closed with two different key and uh, CA gave them uh, a private key and a public key to each of the nodes imagine we have three nodes A and B and C uh, a has its own uh, public key and private key and also B has its own public key and private key and C has its own public key and private key. But CA gives uh, the other's public key to the other. For example, A has public key of C and public key of B and B has the public key of A and C and also C the same scenario. And there is a point. When you want to use this algorithm, there is a point, then when you encrypt some data with this algorithm, for example, when you encrypt some data using a specific public key, the only way to decrypt that, that is use the same uh, private key. And if you encrypt the data with a private key, you can decrypt that with the same public key. For example, a public key and a private key. An example here, for example, A wants to send some data for B and C, and there is a hacker that we don't want to access the data. So A encrypt the data with A's uh, private key and send it through the network. A and B, a B and C receive the data and find out that this data encrypted with A's private key. So they have the A's public key and they can decrypt the data that key uh, named uh, A's uh, public key. And the hacker can't access the data because uh, he or she uh, doesn't have the public key. And another situation, B wants to send data only for B, not even C. So uh, A encrypt the data with B's public key and send it through the network. And B uh, receive the data that is encrypted with B's public key. So he, the only one, can decrypt the data because he is the only one has the B's private key. Okay, and a simple scenario you do always in your uh, network and I run this scenario too many times in too many projects. For example, you have a point-to-point -point link and you want to secure it uh, with more bandwidth and less latency and uh, hidden the problem of hidden uh, nodes, you always uh, enable your wireless link and then between access point and a station, uh, put the mode on uh, AP mode and the other side on a station mode, uh, same as always you do. Uh, and the only different thing uh, is to use the different algorithm. When you want to create a security profile, you always use WPA PSCA or even <laughs> maybe you use a static key that is exhausted. This is a rest in peace because uh, all of the hacker can gain uh, and access your data. You can use dynamic key WPA PSCA or WPA2 PSCA as I talked before that you share the uh, key between access point and a station or you can use uh, WPA EAP and if you uh, enable uh, this algorithm uh, in this slide, uh, for example, uh, you enable uh, 
PSCAL pre-shared key, but uh, when we disable uh, PSCA and use WPA EAP, uh, all of the box of WPA pre-shared key will be disabled and the tab of EAP will be enabled and we can use the certificate that uh, I will talk about this uh, comprehensive for you. But the most important thing that when you want to do this project, you have to create a certificate and using a CA or certificate authority uh, that you can run it in Linux, Windows Server 2003, 2008, 2012, and the others. But what is the solution? Because we don't have it here. We can use router OS because router OS always do everything for us. And there is a, a little uh, certificate authority in the router OS and you can use it for free. But the most important thing that is too many uh, security pre-requested for uh, this uh, scenario. For example, all of the certificate has the uh, validity time. That means it, knows, it doesn't valid before a specific time and it, knows, uh, it does not valid after a specific time. It only valid for a period of time. So you have to set the time. You only go to system menu in the first way uh, and set it uh, manually from the system menu clock and then set the time zone and then uh, set the time. And the second scenario, you can use NTP client, as you know, just set the time zone and then use a uh, public NTP client. And then uh, you have to go to system menu and then certificate menu that is a little uh, certificate authority that you can make certificate for your own and you can use it uh, in your wireless link or your uh, in your tunnel openvpn sstp and the others you just uh, click on add button and create your certificate with the name of your country for example turkey and istanbul and the, the other thing for example locality istanbul and organization farkian tech and you have to specify your uh, key size, for example, from 1,024 through uh, 8,192. And then uh, you have to set the days valid. For example, uh, here we have uh, set it for uh, 365. It means it is valid for uh, about a year from now, from the time of creation. And when you create this key, this certificate, as all the certificate in your real life, you have to sign it to be valid. So you press on sign button to sign this certificate. And then uh, you have to export this certificate because you have to share it with your station or stations. So we click on export button and then from the file menu, you have to choose it uh, a file with cert extension and drag and drop in uh, into your system and then give it to your station and same scenario he or she drag and drop it into the file menu and from the system menu and certificate menu uh, click on uh, import button and select it and uh, there is a point when you want to export the file and you click on the export uh, button there is a passphrase as we talked the most important thing in this scenario that we want more security, more stable network, and more uh, uh, stability. Uh, you have to set a passphrase. It means uh, anybody, if, ha or if gain access to your file, they can't use the file because there is a passphrase. So you always uh, should uh, uh, set the passphrase, even if it is optional, uh, uh, but it is more important to set that. And then in a station, click on import and import that uh, certificate using the same scenario with the uh, same passwords. And in your, uh, after the certificate shared between access point and the station, you have to go to your wireless menu and select on wireless protocol and set it on NSStream NV2. Uh, that is a Macrotic invented protocol, as I talked before, solve hidden node problem, gain more bandwidth and less latency. Uh, so there is no problem with this uh, EAP algorithm that is uh, more encryption. 
So we have uh, a trusted bandwidth. After that, uh, when you want to create a certificate, you go to uh, your certificate uh, security profile menu and select it on WPA, WPA2, EAP uh, option, and then go to AP menu and select your EAP method that the router was supported, EAP TLS, and then uh, TLS mode, you have to click on uh, TLS uh, verif verify certificate that it can be check the certificate with CLR algorithm and the other algorithm, and on the C uh, TLS certificate, you choose the certificate that is shared between access point and the station, and uh, you can uh, check that there is no latency, and it is really trust, and uh, you can use it in all of your network that is on Mikrotik based wireless link. Thank you. If you have any question, I am with you. Do you have questions? Hmm? No question? Okay. Thank you. Thank you for your presentation. Uh, we will we'll 